But today, I'm taking a walk in the local oak forest just up from my village. And I want to try out the pro capture mode on the Olympus. So basically, what the pro capture mode is that it um, it takes images. Um, well, it takes images, but it doesn't save them um, as you hold down the you half press the shutter button. And that way, when you do press the shutter button, it then saves for the last second, kind of back in time, if you will, of what the actions just happened. So I'm going to come up here to photograph a great spot of woodpecker, hopefully coming out of his nest or into the nest. This is just so nice though, the oak forest has really come alive in the last couple of days. Just all the leaves are coming out, but there's still loads of light coming in because it's not that, it's not that filled in just yet. It's still early. Oaks are one of the last broad leaves to kind of get their, get their leaves. So uh, it's kind of a late, late species to, to, to come in. So. I've been up in this area to photograph uh, a lot of, there's a few red stars around here, so I've been focusing a bit on them when it's just been open and you get loads of light in here in the morning. Yeah, the oak forest kind of below me and behind me here, walking into birch forest and kind of a mixture of birch and oak here. And further off, we got pine forest. So loads of different small habitats. Um, Small changes in the habitat, which also changes some of the species composition you get. And this is kind of on the southern facing slope. So then you get on the other side of the hill, it's so much more wet and damp because the northern facing. So there's very different kind of small micro habitats around this forest, which is really cool, really interesting. There he goes, the woodpecker just now. It's just so lively. Now that's very close. The nest that I found is down here. So it might be one of the adults out finding food or something like that. flying up into the nest there, so they're very active. I'm gonna put on my green top that I'm gonna wear, find some of the scrim netting that I'm gonna use, and get my tripod set up and everything. And then I'm gonna find a place down there I'm gonna move into when I see that they go away. So, bear with me, I take a little bit of time, and then we'll get in position. flew up to this kind of half dead tree. Got my camera 
to set up on the nest right now, but I'm a little bit far away still. So I'm going to watch it for a little bit. And then as it moves further away, I'll get into a better position and just sit still. There's two of them there now. One of them just left. And the other one is going in. That's amazing. Unfortunately, it got really dark. Some big gray clouds came over for the last bit of light of the day. What I was hoping for today was actually get a little bit of light through the wings as they're flying, so it's kind of backlit, it's coming from that direction. But um, really thick clouds, and then there's also a lot of foliage in the way, so um, not great for photographing birds in flight. So I'm gonna come back here tomorrow and pick up with the uh, pro capture mode then. Had to take off some clothes, it's quite warm in here. It's the next morning and oh, it's actually it's getting a little bit late. It's probably like 9 30, 10 o'clock. But it was just very stormy this morning, dark clouds, heavy rain, and I decided to come out a little bit later until that light comes out and it's easier to freeze the action. And as you can see here, I brought a hide with me as well. Because yesterday I think I was fairly fine. They seemed to go about their way most of the time but every now and then they would make more uh, noises and things like that so I just didn't want to be you know, in case it was me disturbing them by sitting there I mean I was sitting very quiet but still um, I've, I've, I've preferred just to get a hide and then I can sit here quite comfortably um, and know that I'm not disturbing them I'm, I'm well hidden here and I managed to get a little bit closer as well so that'll be quite interesting to see what kind of images I can get then so this is just absolutely amazing. I got my first one there and I tried this out once before, but I had it on um, a slower, um, you can't get um, a slower frame per second, but now I'll put it on full and it's 60 frames per second. So have a look at this. So a little bit about my settings here. So I'm shooting in full manual. I got an f-stop of f4 and 1600 of a second which seems to freeze the action. Maybe cause just a little bit of wing blur and I quite like that. Uh, I set my ISO to automatic because uh, the light conditions keep changing. I get some really interesting light here. Right now it's overcast so it's going with quite a high ISO. But it's windy, it's partially cloudy, so that, you know, every now and then it opens up and you get this dapple light of like weird patterns, like a little bit illuminated and a little bit of darkness. It can create for some really interesting but random light. So I'm hoping that that's gonna, um, that's gonna work in my favor and I get a few shots with that dapple light because it's really cool. Other than that, I'm shooting with the, so I'm using the Pro Capture on the Olympus, which is basically when I half hold um, 
the shutter button it keeps taking images but it doesn't save them but until I when I press it then it, it saves like the last however many I've chosen I can't remember how many I think I've chosen like the last 25 frames and I've set it to high so right now it's 60 frames per second but I've set a limit on it because I don't need that many shots after I've taken the image because that by that time the bird is already gone when you're shooting in um, when you're using the high function for high um, for the um, pro capture mode basically what that means is that um, I get 60 frames per second but I can only use a single focus I can't continuous focus on that when I'm using that so I've set a single focus on the nesting hole and then I just recompose and I'm going to capture them as they kind of fly down they kind of fall out they kind of just launch launch into the air down and then up um, and I keep so having set the ISO to automatic every time I hold down and kind of start buffering images um, the exposure gets frozen so every time the um, the kind of scene the lighting in the scene changes I have to just let go of the of the button of the shutter button and half press it again so that it it chooses a different ISO for me and I'm kind of correctly exposing the scene. Um, and right now it seems, I'm wondering if they, um, they seem to work in teams. They seem to, one of them seem to be inside. One of them is inside right now. I haven't paid too much attention to if it's the male or female. Um, but you can tell with the great spotted woodpecker, you can tell that the male has a red kind of patch on the head. Um, whereas the female doesn't. They both have a red patch kind of on the behind, but um, the red patch on the head is just the males. So it looks like one of them goes out to feed or get some kind of nesting material, and then they kind of swap over. So they meet. Once one of them lands on the tree, they kind of meet. It tries to go in. It's, okay, the other one just comes up, flies out, and then that goes in. So it's quite cool. So I can actually get both woodpeckers in the same image with one just about to go into the hole as one flies down. So, really fun, really fun feature. Now one thing to remember about um, these um, using the Pro Capture with the Olympus is you need a fast memory card. So I'll put a link to one that I recommend that I use below. I use the Tough Sony. So you have to make, what you have to make sure is that you get a, a fast writing speed, not just reading speed. Um, and this is a 299 writing speed, which makes it very fast and. Um, the buffers really quickly. This is really fun. And I'm getting a lot of goes at it. That there's a quite a bit of waiting time in between. One of them is out. Um, but I mean, the great thing is I know where they're going to be. I can sit here in the hide. I'm totally hidden. They don't even know that I'm here. Um, it's just a perfect, perfect way to photograph. The trickiest thing is trying to get flights um, coming to the tree because that's I can't predict that very well except unless I hear them nearby then maybe they're on the way but maybe not like very often it could be a different woodpecker there's a lot of woodpeckers in this forest they could just be nearby feeding um, or, any, or getting some nesting material so it's not a certain predictor of behavior but um, there's at least a higher chance that when I hear them, then I get ready if the light is good. The Pro Capture Mode definitely takes a little bit of getting used to, because as I'm sure you are as well, you're so used to actually trying to predict the behavior that you're trying to photograph and then instantly you know, press the shutter if something happens. Whereas now, you actually have to wait until it happens. You have to wait until the action happens before you press the shutter. 
it's really easy to get trigger happy and pull the trigger a little bit too soon. But if you have a fast memory card that you know you can I think I've gotten away with it a couple of times by like instantly half pressing it again and being ready again if it didn't happen right away. Um, like sometimes now I can see the woodpecker is kind of like coming out of the hole, peeking out of the hole and it's very easy then to just get a little bit too trigger happy and press the shutter. Um, but you do have to wait until you actually you have to see it fly away and the way I've set it up is so that I take most of my images before um, I actually press the shutter all the way and that means that I really ideally I want to see the woodpecker you know, properly start that flight I usually I always use the viewfinder and taking photos but for this I find it a bit easier to to actually use the screen on the back just because I'm sitting hunched over and you're waiting for actions to happen easier just to lean back a bit and have a look at the whole picture um, and then um, take take the photo because it's um, yeah when you have to sit still like this for quite a long time a lot long period of time because you don't exactly know when it's going to happen and, and um, yeah you just have to sit and wait and wait so it's a bit easier to, to just sit on a chair and uh, uh, and wait and using the LCD screen for this for this particular shot. Okay, been here for a good few hours now and gone through one battery and almost an SD card as well. It's a 32 gigabyte card, um, so there'll be quite a few images uh, to to delete and go through, and I'll show you guys some of my favorites that. Uh, I got. I think it worked out pretty well. I know I got some that were sharp. Every now and then I would try and look back a little bit, but I didn't want to spend too much time looking at photos while the stuff was happening right in front of me. So anyways, that's the Pro Capture feature of the Olympus that I got, and so far I'm really enjoying it. I'm just experimenting with it. I'll make a video on the setup of it once I'm kind of clear on exactly how I like to have it set up, and I'll show you guys that, and I'll put a link to to it in this video as well so that you guys who have an Olympus can check out how I set it up. Uh, don't forget that I also have a Patreon site so if any of you are interested in that it's more where I dive more into the technical, the you know the everything to do with composition and more into field skills, research, planning, finding wildlife and uh, getting close to wildlife. So if you're interested in that I'll put a link. So if you like the look of it Give it a shot, sign up, and just as you know, you can cancel it anytime. Thank you guys so much for joining me here today, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.